ever pondered how the Mongol Empire, one of the largest in history, came to be? Let's journey back to the 12th century, to the windswept steppes of Mongolia. A man named Temujin was born amidst the disparate Mongol tribes, a world marked by tribal conflicts and power struggles. Temujin, who we now know as Genghis Khan, was a man of extraordinary charisma and keen political acumen. His early years were marked by hardship, but he overcame adversity and began to unify the Mongol tribes. He leveraged his military skill and strategic genius, winning respect and loyalty from the tribes that once fought against him. As Genghis Khan emerged victorious in a series of tribal conflicts, he gained recognition not just as a leader, but as a visionary. His dream was to unite the Mongol tribes into a single, formidable force. And in the year 1206, he did just that. The disparate Mongol tribes, once at odds with each other, were now unified under Genghis Khan's rule. His leadership marked the dawn of a new era. With the tribes united, he was proclaimed the Great Khan. This momentous proclamation marked the birth of the Mongol Empire, an empire that would eventually span across Eurasia, from the Pacific Ocean to Eastern Europe and from Siberia to the Indian subcontinent. Genghis Khan's rise to power was not just the product of his military prowess, but also his ability to inspire and unite. His rule was characterized by a blend of military might, political strategy, and a deep understanding of human nature. He knew how to rally his people and inspire loyalty, a quality that would be instrumental in the empire's future conquests and expansions. So, with the proclamation of Genghis as the Great Khan, the Mongol Empire was born. From the windswept steppes of Mongolia, it would grow to become one of the largest empires in history, leaving an indelible mark on the world. But that, dear listeners, is a story for another time. The Mongols, known for their military prowess, but how did they achieve it? A question that has intrigued historians for centuries. The Mongols, led by Genghis Khan, were not just conquerors. They were exceptional strategists and tacticians. Their military tactics were a blend of precision, innovation, and sheer audacity, which they wielded with unparalleled expertise. Picture this, a Mongol warrior, astride his sturdy steed, his eyes focused on the horizon. He's not merely a horseman. No, he's an expert horseman, able to control his mount with just his legs, leaving his hands free to use his deadliest weapon, the composite bow. The Mongol composite bow, a marvel of medieval technology, was a compact weapon with a remarkable range and deadly accuracy. Each Mongol warrior was an archer, trained from a young age to hit targets from the back of a galloping horse, a skill that gave them a significant advantage in battle. But their prowess didn't stop at horseback archery. The Mongols were masters of manipulation on the battlefield. They employed a strategy known as the feigned retreat, a deceptive tactic where they would pretend to flee in disarray, luring their enemies into a chase. Once their opponents were scattered and vulnerable, the Mongols would turn back with a devastating counterattack. Their strategic acumen also extended to sieges. The Mongols were quick learners, adapting siege warfare techniques from the many different cultures they encountered. They used a variety of tools, from battering rams to trebuchets, to break down city walls and fortifications, often with stunning success. These innovative strategies, coupled with their exceptional skill, made the Mongols an unstoppable force. It wasn't just their physical prowess or their technological advantages that made them formidable. It was their ability to think, to plan, to adapt. The Mongols didn't just win battles, they outsmarted their enemies, using every tool at their disposal to ensure their victory. Their military tactics, a blend of strategy and skill, were a key factor in the Mongols' rise to power, transforming them from a collection of nomadic tribes into an empire that spanned continents. From the steppes of Mongolia, the Mongol Empire stretched its reach to the corners of the known world. Under the iron-willed leadership of Genghis Khan, the Mongols embarked on a series of military campaigns that saw their dominion grow exponentially. Genghis himself conquered vast swaths of Central Asia, China, the Caucasus, and parts of Eastern Europe, leaving behind a trail of conquest that would be etched into the annals of history. But the relentless expansion did not stop with Genghis Khan. His successors continued to widen the empire's boundaries, their armies reaching as far west as Hungary and as far south as Vietnam. They rode on horseback across the great Eurasian steppe, 
over mountains, through forests, and across deserts, fearless and undeterred. Their conquests were swift and brutal, their rule absolute. Through relentless conquests, the Mongol Empire expanded faster than any before it, weaving a tapestry of power and influence that spanned continents. An empire so vast required an efficient system of rule, one that the Mongols ingeniously implemented. At the heart of this system was the Yasa, a code of laws established by the empire's founder, Genghis Khan. The Yasa served as the legal framework that governed the empire. Its laws were comprehensive, covering everything from civil and criminal matters to military discipline. The Yasa was unique in its focus on meritocracy. It was a system that rewarded merit over birthright, ensuring that the best and brightest had the opportunity to rise through the ranks. This was a stark departure from the feudal systems of Europe and other regions, where nobility and power were often hereditary. The administration of the Mongol Empire was also characterized by its decentralization. The empire was divided into several regions known as Khanates, each ruled by a member of Genghis Khan's family. This division allowed for local governance while maintaining overall unity under the Mongol banner. The most famous of these Khanates were the Yuan Dynasty in China, the Ilkhanate in the Middle East, the Chagatai Khanate in Central Asia, and the Golden Horde in Eastern Europe. Each of these Khanates had its own ruler, known as a Khan, who was responsible for the administration and governance of their respective region. Yet, despite this decentralization, the Mongol Empire was able to maintain a high degree of unity and cohesion. This was due in part to the Yasa, which provided a common legal and moral code for the entire empire. But it was also due to the Mongols' unique approach to governance, which prioritized meritocracy and decentralization over centralized power. This system of administration allowed the Mongol Empire to maintain control over a vast and diverse territory from the steppes of Central Asia to the heart of Europe. It was a testament to the Mongols' ingenuity and adaptability, and a key factor in their empire's longevity. Thus, the Mongol Empire, though vast and diverse, was held together by a unique system of administration. Believe it or not, the Mongols were not just conquerors, but facilitators of a great cultural exchange. During their reign, a period known as the Pax Mongolica unfolded. This era, translating as Mongol peace, was a time of relative calm and stability that swept across their vast empire. But what made the Pax Mongolica truly remarkable? It was the incredible exchange of goods, ideas, and technologies across Eurasia. Imagine for a moment a world where cultures from the far corners of the known world could interact freely, sharing their unique perspectives and innovations. This was the reality under the Mongol rule. Silks from China, spices from India, scientific knowledge from the Middle East, and philosophies from Europe. All these traveled along the well-protected trade routes, fostering a rich amalgamation of cultures and ideas. So, in a strange twist of fate, the Mongol Empire, through its conquests, inadvertently became a melting pot of cultures. All empires rise and fall, and the Mongol Empire was no exception. The decline of this vast empire began following the death of Kublai Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan, in the year 1294. Kublai Khan's passing marked the end of an era, a period of unprecedented expansion and consolidation of power. His successors were unable to maintain the unity and strength of the empire, leading to its gradual disintegration. Internal strife played a significant role in the empire's downfall, as infighting and power struggles among Genghis Khan's descendants undermined stability. The meritocratic system established by Genghis Khan began to erode, replaced by nepotism and corruption, weakening the empire's administrative structure. But it wasn't just internal discord that led to the empire's decline. External pressures also played a part. The Mongols were constantly at war, defending their vast territories on multiple fronts. Their military might, once invincible, was stretched thin, and their enemies began to learn and adapt to Mongol warfare tactics. By the late 14th century, the once mighty Mongol Empire had fragmented into various successor states. The Yuan Dynasty in China, the Ilkhanate in the Middle East, the Chagatai Khanate in Central Asia, and the Golden Horde in Eastern Europe all disintegrated, giving rise to modern nations in these regions. Despite its downfall, the Mongol Empire left an indelible mark on the annals of history. 
It transformed the political and cultural landscape of Eurasia and facilitated significant cultural exchange and economic integration. The legacy of the Mongol Empire is still evident today in the languages, traditions, and political boundaries of numerous countries. So while empires rise and fall, their impact can resonate for centuries. The Mongol Empire might have crumbled, but its echoes still reverberate through time, reminding us of a chapter in history when the Mongol horsemen ruled the world. As our journey through the rise and fall of the Mongol Empire comes to an end, we are reminded of the transience of power and the enduring nature of cultural legacies. From the founding of the empire by Genghis Khan to its golden age under Kublai Khan, the Mongols have left an indelible mark on the fabric of history. Their military strategies still inspire armies today, their administrative systems have informed governance models, and the cultural exchanges they facilitated have shaped the world as we know it. But as the Mongol Empire illustrates, even the mightiest empires can crumble under the weight of internal discord and external pressures. Yet their influence can echo through the ages, shaping societies and cultures for centuries to come. If you've enjoyed this journey through the Mongol Empire, we invite you to delve deeper into the annals of history with us. Like, comment, and share your thoughts on this fascinating chapter of history. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more historical explorations. As we continue to traverse the vast landscapes of history, we hope to bring you more insights and captivating narratives about the people, places, and events that have shaped our world. Until next time, keep exploring.